the Banjo-Kazooie series has brought us a large number of fantastic, ambitious 3D platformers. But over the past 10 years, the IP has been drowning in a sea of nothing by Microsoft. But today may be the day to finally bring Banjo back. With him coming to Smash, it's time to come up with a pitch for the ultimate Banjo-Kazooie game. I brought three people here, we're gonna hear their pitches. This is Armchair Devs, Banjo-Kazooie. So welcome to Armchair Devs, Banjo-Kazooie. As a part of Aga Hust, I brought three lovely panelists, people that love the Banjo-Kazooie series and are ready to pitch the game of their dreams. I, of course, have Mr. Feel from Mr. Feel's Wild Ride. Eekum pokum. I have Bob Video Games from Gigaboost.com. Hey, everybody, what's up? And a brand new competitor. <laughs> Hailing from the harsh wilds of the Lord of Panhandle, it's Dan Video Games of Gigaboost.com. There has been a slight alteration to tonight's program. Oh no! Oh, the part no! of Dan Video oh, Games no! will now be played by Dr. Agro, <laughs> as Dan is oh, busy no! counting pixels somewhere. Son of a bitch, Dan Video Games, <laughs> and his devotion to never doing work on these podcasts, <laughs> has called in an assist. I couldn't be happier. <laughs> Man, I didn't expect jump scares whenever I have to host these things. <laughs> Let me go ahead and adjust some things on my notes. <laughs> Let me just change this to better, Dan. Mm. Oh, I'm going to beat him to death. So we have... <laughs> we're going to be doing pitches for a Banjo-Kazooie game today. <laughs> but before we, before we get started, I'd like to ask each panelist about their experience with the Banjo-Kazooie series, starting with Dr. Agro. Well, uh, I mean, Banjo-Kazooie 1 was an enormous part of my childhood. Like, played it over and over and over again. Didn't know Tui existed till years later. And, uh, like most of the demographic was entirely turned off by nuts and bolts, like, opening 10 minutes, so I never played that one. But apparently, uh, yeah, some prolific streamers have dug up that it's, you know, good? Hmm. I don't know, I feel like I slept through some of it, I can't really, can't really be <laughs> sure. I do know that you can drown women in it, so um, it, it, fills some, it fills some demographics. As God intended. Yeah, for the gamers. So, uh, Mr. Feel. Uh, I did not play any of these games as a child. I bought mm. Banjo-Kazooie when it came out on Xbox 360 Arcade in 2008. Uh, mm. I played the entire thing. I was like, that game's all right. Uh, then I bought Banjo-Tooie when it came out about six months later and went... Oh, this one is less all right, and did not play anymore after about two hours of that. And that is my entire experience with Banjo-Kazooie. I did not play Nuts and Bolts because everybody always said it was bad. Maybe I will, will if I ever own a platform it's on again. Maybe, you know, when, when they eventually port that to the Wonder Swan, you'll have your chance. Now, Bob, what is your experience with the Banjo-Kazooie franchise. I have played every Banjo game in one week. <laughs> How was it? It was not good. There were some parts that were okay. <laughs> That's the nicest thing you've said about it in weeks. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever. Yeah, that. Yeah, I almost don't believe it. The Game Boy Advance <laughs> game was mostly okay. <laughs> Oh, okay, there we go. Now we, wow. Now we were able to work that out. Well, with all of this experience between these contestants, I'm incredibly excited. So, feel like since we opened that thing, lastly, with Bob, it's only right to lead off with Bob. He will have 30 seconds to make an elevator pitch for his Banjo-Kazooie game. Bob, you may begin... And I'll start the timer when I hear you speaking, and Discord will break it. Perfect. Banjo-Kazooie Off Course is a racing game that takes vehicle, variety, and open structure of Diddy Kong Racing and mixes it with the realistic off-road feel of a MotorStorm game. 
In the near future, Grunty, in her new sexy robot body, is working together with the Lord of Games to turn the Spiral Mountain into a space elevator that connects the world of Banjo to other famous Xbox characters' worlds like JD Phoenix, Spartan Locke, Senua, and Drew. <laughs> okay, in time! In time! Um, um... <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've I've written some notes. <laughs> I've written some notes. I think some of them are wrong. Uh, yeah, let's just go ahead. I wrote wave race for some reason. Let's go ahead and adjust that. <laughs> wrong one. Uh, there we go. All right, <clears throat> Mr. Feel, you will you will have uh, thirty seconds as soon as you begin speak. With Banjo put back in the public eye with his appearance in Smash, the time is now to bring him and Kazooie back. However, the dated gameplay of the originals won't fly in the modern market, and Nuts and Bolts 2 just isn't viable. So we need Evolution, a new Banjo game drawing on tested gameplay mechanics and structures of over 20 years of 3D platformers, with Rare's iconic sardonic wit and charm as icing on the cake. This is Banjo 3E, presented by Hagsoft. All right, that's time. All right, uh, that was the easiest amount of notes I've had to write so far. So that, on its own, real good. In fact, it's one bullet point. All right, now, Dr. Agra, <laughs> present. Uh, the, 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 <laughs> fortunately, <clears throat> present. Uh, <laughs> you'll have 30 seconds uh, from whenever you get started. The Banjo-Kazooie series is one whose boundless imagination and zest for delightful whimsy is matched only by its insufferable fetch quest padding and occasional control jank. In my proposed next installment, Banjo-Kazoo 3 and the Unbearable Bird Trail of Mumbo Jumbo, the goal is to capture the original vision of one of the era's most beloved, deservedly or otherwise 3D platformers. A focus on meaningful combat and puzzles, textured traversal, and a functional camera serve as foundation for a sweeping tale of revenge, redemption, and the price of power. All right, that's gonna, that's gonna do that. I uh, think we have three, three swell games here. Um, I have some, some, some notes here. I'm just gonna have to mull this over. Yep, this seems, this all seems great. Uh, one, one quick thing before we go. Uh, Bob, what What's is, that? uh, what is the name of your game again? I didn't get that part. <laughs> Banjo Kazooie Off Course. Okay, all right. For some reason, I thought it was some insane, insane name, but, you know, no, that was one of the other ones. Now then, we'll have to uh, move into our next segment. Also notice KZ needs to go look at how we do this show again. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> there we go. Found it. <clears throat> all right, we're going to begin grilling our contestants on their pitches, on their, on their game idea. So let's get into it with um Mr. Feel. Yes. So now with with your brand new title, uh Banjo 3E by Hagsoft, I, I have to ask, will there be any new moves in Banjo and Kazooie's arsenal? And what are they? You can give examples. There will not be any new moves. In fact, they will be losing several moves, having their uh, arsenal pared down to a sane amount of general use movement options instead of lots of completely insane things used in three places. All right, all right. You know, sometimes less can be more. You know, it, some people, you know, it, some people at this point have reached the age where they played banjo as a kid, but now have... um. Now, dimension. They can't even remember like some of the moves that existed in in those uh, older older games. So that's very very interesting. Uh, Bob, what's up? Now, what's really important is uh, you, you said some a you're taking some aspects of Banjo Kazooie off course from Diddy Kong Racing. Right now, the the the, the question, of course, is will there will you make people do the same content again but collect coins and win? The races oh will there be any are you asking if there's padding of course we're making a banjo game still of there's going to be a different coin oh. for every racer 
Also, the racers are each in oh. pairs of two, kind of like Mario Kart Double Dash. So we have these flip switches Ooh, we go over, right. switches between which racer, and then they can pick up a different set of coins on that same course. Oh, that's, uh, that, that's, that's content. Innovative. That's brave. That's brave. Bravery is the theme of this game, it's looking like. I'm getting very excited. <sighs> now, Dr. Agro. Mm-hmm. Uh, in my notes, I have labeled Banjo Kazoo Three Question Mark Mumbo. That's what I had your title because I did my best with the assault that I received while having it pitched. Uh, you put apparently Mumbo was in its title. I've already forgotten. Uh, how much of a role will the shaman play in your Banjo Kazooie game? Uh, Mumbo Jumbo is the crux of the entire inciting incident when he kidnaps Kazooie to sacrifice her soul to the insatiable hunger of whatever dark thing it is from which he draws his voodoo powers. Um, all right. So that's, uh, that's interesting. Um, that's, <laughs> usually it's usually it's like a token or a globo, but you know, as we reach the 4k age, I guess the power, you know, <laughs> it take, needs a little bit more than a collectible that is sometimes in his fucking house. So, uh, we'll have to, you know, it's always good to escalate things. It's like Dragon Ball. You got you got to really, re really escalate and give us some stakes, which is uh, well, that's, that ends up being incredibly, incredibly interesting. I'm blacking out. Uh, give me a second. Hold on. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and do uh, Doctor Agro once again. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, obviously, if the inciting incident is Mumbo Jumbo kidnapping Kazooie. The whole banjo kazooie bread and butter movement, the ver the various moves you have, it's going to be pretty limited. So, uh, how will uh, are we going to be seeing new moves for banjo himself? Is he getting a different bird, or what are some of the plans for the gameplay? Well, we've uh, overhauled banjo's uh, combat in itself. Um, it, it's mostly uh, three hit combos, directional modifiers. You get Kazooie back pretty early, sort of. You um, get her body uh, back without a soul uh, and gain Corrupted Kazooie, which has its own combo finishing moves and uh, movement powers. Uh, Banjo's backpack has also been expanded by uh, using some of the mumbo magic left behind uh, in his hut. It now can contain three forms of Kazooie when you get them later in the game. Bottles the Mole, uh, Tootie, Humba Wumba, and uh, a tree. The, the the tree doesn't actually do anything. Well, you know, ra the classic rare humor. Sometimes you got to put a joke in there, and uh, uh, just a tree that'd be pretty good. Uh, I, I hate I hate to throw a modifier question in there. Does the tree have eyes? Does it speak? The tree does not speak, but for a certain portion of the game, it does have eyes. Temporarily has eyes. Yep. All right. Let's just put that there. Very good. Now, feel when it comes to Banjo 3E by Hagsoft, I have to ask. Uh, you seem to be really changing up things. You're stripping out a lot of old moves, paring paring down the general move set. Uh, with change comes uh, maybe changing the identity of the series. Uh, what will who will be doing the soundtrack for this game? Oh, we're still going to get Grant Kirkhope. He's iconic. Oh, good. He he is quite iconic. But because we also need a real composer, we're going to act to ask David Wise to help too. <laughs> now, while I uh, disagree, while I disagree with your assessment that Grant Kirkhope is somehow not a real composer, uh, David Wise is the shit. Uh, I think he can really help remix some of those gum commercial jingles. Now. I think moving on to the, uh, moving back over to Bob with his, uh, pitch of Banjo-Kazooie, uh, off course. Now, uh, I think it's really interesting you have a plot that I believe was about a space elevator. Yes. So, I, it, it made me think of the potential of going to all these different places. What are our vehicle options in Banjo-Kazooie off course? Oh, we're gonna have cars, monster trucks, planes... And uh, hovercrafts. That is going to be really interesting. Monster trucks in particular. That's something you put on the box. 
you just get your big tricked out, your big truck, maybe an explosion. I could see how all of this would be very appealing to our new audience. Now then, coming up here, I tasked my lovely contestants with drawing things, because we do this uh, every episode of Armchair Debs. Uh, this time, I had them draw a world from the game and a character from that particular world. We're now going to see each contestant uh, show that lovely art off and see everything it has to offer. We're going to start with Dr. Agro. Okay. <clears throat> you got a preference for which is first? Uh, I believe we could start with uh, the world, and then that'll obviously feed into the character. Okay. All right, this is uh, <laughs> Clanker's Chasm. And uh, Chasm, I see Chasm Craps here. I see... Uh, phases and that's every level in this game has um three phases they're they're all uh intricate puzzle boxes that sort of unfold as you go through them and change states to allow access to new areas and new items uh mm. in in phase one uh clanker uh who now has jet engines attached to him is is making Ooh. a rapid circuit around this canyon uh far above the mass of crabs below uh after you are able to divert him from his course and crash him into the rocks, you begin phase two, where you defend the down clanker from uh, wave after wave of crab battles before facing the final crab boss on the large mesa in the center. Uh, the result of which causes the entire canyon to flood, which results in the third phase of uh, mostly underwater content with controls that don't blow ass. Oh, that's a very important very important part here. Uh, good, good controls. All right. Well, love that quite a bit. Uh, I, of course, characters are important. Look to see what we have uh, here for that. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm, um, <laughs> this is the uh, game's... Now, huh? All right. So I look at it, and man, uh, I, I, fe I feel like this is less Banjo-Kazooie, more Final Fantasy 16 by Bob, but I, you know, I'm feeling it. <laughs> You know, the flattery is, is not plagiarism. Excellent crossover with Bayonetta. <laughs> uh, yes, I was thinking of that or the ball Wilson from Castaway. <laughs> this is, in fact, uh, Katana Spectu, uh, who is both mm. the patron of Mumbo Jumbo's uh, wicked voodoo magic and also the reason that everything in the Banjo Kazoo universe has two big giant eyes on it. <laughs> God. These eyes are representative of his corruptive influence throughout the universe. I can't wait for you to play Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> I'm a tingle with anticipation. Yeah, it seems like you really are down with what true creators are throwing down. <laughs> very, very good. Now, I'd hate to be the person to have to follow that up, but thankfully, I'm hosting the show. So, feel. I'm very okay. excited to see what you've had to bring in, because multiple times on a stream yesterday, you said, leave me alone, I'm coloring. Ah! <laughs> there we go. This is the first level of Banjo 3E presented by Hagsoft, the king of Mumbo's Mountain. It is a reimagining of Mumbo's Mountain, the first level huh. in Banjo-Kazooie, but as a battle royale game. Uh, in this level, <laughs> in this level, uh, Banjo will have to get a jiggy by winning the battle royale before the level actually opens and he can explore. Uh, Mumble will turn Kazooie into a gun so Banjo can compete and kill 23 Minjos throughout the level, exploring the level as he does and learning where other things might be in the future of the level. And at the end, he will have to defeat the world's most popular King of Mumbo's Mountain streamer, uh, Trophy Thomas, by shooting him in the face repeatedly. <laughs> uh, I, I think this is a good idea. It, it takes elements from the three main banjo games, of course, uh, Mumbo's Mountain, uh, the Trophy Thomas from uh, Nuts and Bolts, and, uh, of course, uh, turning Kazooie into a gun is like the first-person shooter segments of Banjo-Tooie, in a way. Uh, and... You can see a rocket there because the level has basically just been shelled to shit. <laughs> yeah, things. Environmental storytelling. I get you. 
Now, with an area like this, it has to have its share of iconic characters. There we go. Ah! These are Bongo and Vuzeli. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, they are. I'm, I'm, they, quite, I'm gonna say the f word now. <laughs> they are evil, quote, evil clones of Banjo and Kazooie made by Grunty. Uh, she plans to release a video game starring them to destroy Banjo and Kazooie's reputation. However, they are not truly antagonistic. They're just dumb. <laughs> They appear in every level, not just King of Mumbo's Mountain, and by paying them notes, they will build a complicated, shoddy platforming challenge that leads to a jiggy. Now, that really works, because if it becomes a platforming challenge, it feels more like Minecraft. And that's very on brand for Microsoft. Try and embrace some of that. Uh, really good detail on this is a, is a gray bear. I I uh I enjoy that. Very important. What does banjo sound like? What does this this new banjo sound like? He sounds like ba 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 ba. <laughs> that is probably the most important thing that you've done in this entire episode. So I really appreciate it. Uh, cause meanwhile, Vuzeli solely speaks in censorship bleeps. <laughs> I'm surprised. I'm su you know, if they made more rare games, if they were allowed to make games, we probably would have hit that by now. So that's definitely something I think we <laughs> we need. Now, saving the best for last, I can say with true confidence, the grand master champion of previous episodes, and the person that if I have to say they won this episode, I might as well put the bullet in my brain. Bob, <laughs> I need the drawing of your... Banjo-Kazooie World, or Racetrack, I guess. Whatever you ended up drawing. Right? I want to see it. Here we go. Let's see if Discord will do this one. <laughs> Probably not. Here we go. Oh. So. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> so this is our answer to Rainbow Road. I, it is. This is the most detailed thing you've ever drawn. <laughs> I got Photoshop for this one. <laughs> Oh, what do you tell me? You didn't hand draw the cosmos? <laughs> it is a, a gigantic Humbo Wumba, because, you know, she likes being big. Really big. <laughs> oh, After some okay. mishaps. I thought, it was like, I thought it was like some racist turban man. Right? I thought it was human Kazooie. I was very scared. <laughs> no! I considered it. <laughs> Become as gods. <laughs> So she's become so Man. big she can no longer maintain her own orbit. <laughs> she's left Earth. Uh, Mumbo, <laughs> you've gone too far this time. <laughs> Much fun for space. Yeah, we have the racetrack going all around her. It's very dangerous. <laughs> also, you know, Mumbo stole her shoes. It's terrible. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Now I hate I hate to move this show too fast, but please just give me your fucking character. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Microsoft. Okay, believe is that a? <laughs> we couldn't have them be cartoony anymore, so Log has turned them into a uh, more realistic oh, no. version. This is this is Kazooie now. Oh no! <laughs> we really need to fit the aesthetic of other characters like JD Phoenix. We don't want him to look oh, out of place. God! Oh! <laughs> I want to end one episode without having a nightmare about something you drew. <laughs> oh my God! It's like a bl a black chocobo's head on a watering can. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, a uh, question. Separate racer, or 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 is it? Oh, is it like they're in a team? So yeah, it's the, like you would you would switch. Right, right. That's why I still got the backpack. We just I wanted to get the pure. You know what a bear looks like. You don't know what a kazooie is. She's a <laughs> regal, so it's like a flamingo and an eagle mixed together. Yes, <laughs> mixed. It's quite it's quite Kino as is as is the body horror you've made that. <laughs> Reminds me that yes, you did indeed watch that scene in Toy Story One. <laughs> we we've been provided some wonderful art from all of our contestants, and I always appreciate it when they bring 
something interesting, innovative, and beautiful to, to the table. Now, through all of this, I'm sure there are things that they have, haven't had the chance to say about their project. So I will give them an opportunity to do that. So we're going to be starting, oh, uh, why not, with Bob. All right, I feel like I haven't had a chance to talk about my amazing crossover characters. Man, I, I just love crossover characters, Bob. All right, so we're going to have Kylo Ren with the iconic General Hux, who is in fact in those movies, <laughs> Spartan Locke, and Olympia Vale, who is another amazing character from Halo 5, and Drew in Thumbband. As, uh, as, as a Halo mega fan, I can agree with you, yes. <laughs> Scalebound characters, no, it's not disrespectful at all that we canceled their game and now we're putting them in our crossover game. It's fine. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Oh. oh, and I also, one other thing I really need to get out, we're getting Grant, or Kirk, or Grant Kirkhope, of course, the legend. He can turn mm -hmm. all of these iconic songs from all these amazing game series we have and turn them into the Teddy Bear's Picnic. Puh! The one true song. Good. That's, um, I feel like I've learned so much more about Banjo-Kazooie off course. Now, Feel, I need to know what's something you really need to get out about Banjo 3 presented by Hagsoft. Well, some people might be worried because I said we're taking away several moves. Uh, they don't need to be because those moves were probably stupid. Uh, Banjo and Kazooie will retain the high jump, the double jump, uh, the Talon Trot, of course, except the Talon Trot will no longer move faster than Banjo unless you're on a slanted plane. Now, that seems like a great idea. Also, moves such as, uh, Wonder Wing and the Flying will no longer be considered moves, but will be cheats given to you by Cheeto at specific uh, little courses that end in a jiggy. So unfortunately, you will no longer be able to turn invincible anytime you want, resulting in some enemies being immune to invincibility for the sake of balance. You know, that seems like a really good idea. Airtight game design. I'm very, very impressed at how much you've thought this through. Now, to the person who I have the most notes of somehow, uh, Dr. Agro. There's one thing that you have to get out about this game. Mm -hmm. What would it be? Well, I'd like to expand on the expanded character list, uh, or what is referred to in-game as backpack buddies. Like I said, you, uh, you get Kazooie back, uh, a form of her, pretty early on, and uh, you switch between them uh, mid-level, and they each have different utilities. Uh, Kazooie unlocks the double jump and has different combo finishes, uh, bottles... Uh, you summon him, drop him down at any point in the level, and then you can, from any other point in the level, recall to that point in case you, you know, fuck up a simple jump and just really want to get back to a point and retry it immediately. Uh, Tootie does uh, nothing much. She just shows up and tells you that she's okay because she hasn't been around since Banjo 1. Uh, aside from basic Kazooie, you've got corrupted Kazooie. Um, who does combo finishes with small AoEs and has a slight boost of damage, and Awaken Kazooie, which is, you get pretty late in the game, and is the only way to actually fly uh, in atmosphere or out of it. Uh, this is important because you can get through most of the levels just by beating the first two phases, uh, collecting the requisite number of notes and moving on, but if you want to access either of the secret endings, you're going to need to go back to those levels with your full power-ups to get uh, both Gruntilda's bottle messages and the uh, Ratchet and Clank nuts and bolts. Oh, oh, that's... Yeah. Yeah, you always need to go pick those up. It's very important. All right, so... Now I've given, given you guys some time to allow me to grill you on your game. But now we get the distinct honor passed on to you to ask each other things. So, starting with Feel. Feel's going to ask Bob and then Dr. Agro a question about their game. Bob, your game will have Kylo Ren in it. Mm-hmm. Is EA making this game? <laughs> no, of course not. Why would EA make the game? Come on, come on. Uh-oh. We're going to get Playground Games to make it. They, they make the Forza Horizon games. They're solid guys. We'll just have to... We'll have to do a licensed nonsense to get this done, but we need him in there. 
Oh, that's really good. Most of Rare's employees are already making Forza cars. Right? So it just makes sense for them to be making... Okay. Aggro. Mm-hmm. Now, the, the version of Kazooie you get back early on is... has No longer has a soul. Right. Will there be a dramatic scene where some sort of demonic force tries to possess the soulless body of Kazooie. Uh, that happens in the final boss battle if you have not collected all of the mumbo tokens. I see. True endings are important. All right, that's uh, a lot of very critical information on that. We're going to move on to Dr. Agro getting the opportunity to ask a question to the other two. Okay, Bob. Uh Uh-huh. I'm, uh... I'm I'm looking at this uh, racetrack here. Right. My question is, uh, will I be able to, uh, via some kind of on-track boost or pickup item, be able to gain enough speed to break off of the track and bury my car either into Humbawamba's tits or between her succulent toes? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, definitely. (laughs) There will be special mumbo pads for this. (laughs) They're only in this level. (laughs) The game acts like it's a glitch, but it clearly isn't. These are notes I am writing right now. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Feel, uh, given that the design ethos of this game has apparently been culled from the last 20 years of more modern game design, uh, how will you deal with the presence or absence of microtransactions in this game? Well... Uh, We will not have any microtransactions. You will be able to buy many, many stupid costumes for Banjo and Kazooie. Aren't those microtransactions? (laughs) No. Oh, okay. (laughs) So so I guess we're adding them in the day one patch then. Whatever makes it so it's not on the box. (laughs) (sighs) All right. I've learned learned a lot about that in regards to... uh, one uh specific stuff with bob's uh racetrack and uh feel understanding certain aspects of uh, video games and uh first i feel like someone has posted uh, an image in the chat i think it might have been dan about what a microtransaction is <laughs> maybe hoping to shed some light on uh, microtransactions being a business model where users can purchase virtual goods with micro payments and uh well let's that's well, fine. Uh, well, I'm sure they're I'm... macro payments. They're like twenty bucks a costume. <laughs> <laughs> what, whatever, whatever makes feel not sound like an idiot. Now, Bob, your time has come. All right, Doctor Agro. Yo. Given your sordid past on this show, <laughs> slander. What kind of DLC <laughs> plan slash strategy do you have for this game? <laughs> I uh, I actually don't. Uh, oh, I, I intend to put all the money that we would have used developing that system into the world's most pompously self-righteous Our Game is Complete in the Box ad <laughs> campaign you have ever seen. Buying this game will be seen as a morally right act. <laughs> <laughs> is it $100 on day one? Only if you buy the version with the backpack. And the backpack will be shittier than it looks on the website. <laughs> Perfect. I love that. <laughs> All right. Banjo Kazoo 3 is moral dilemma dollar signs. Very good. Feel. Yes. Given your Bill and Ted esque villain characters, <laughs> will there be any time traveling hijinks in your game? No. Okay. I was worried. Well, that was a good amount of questions. That uh, our contestants got to ask each other, really build out what these games are, uh, what these games are going to be. Now, what I'm going to need is a final statement, and just like the elevator pitch is going to be 30 seconds, each contestant will have to give their final statement on the game. Now, uh, given the events of recent episodes, uh, I feel it's very important to uh, say this up front. Now, uh, there was an incident in which a contestant who will not be named, uh, upon reaching the final statement, just said the same things they said at the beginning of the episode. We don't need that. We need new things. We don't want to imply that you spent five minutes on your pitch. So, as long as you, you know this and 
Don't talk about Captain Picard. I think we'll be good to go here. So starting with Bob, once he starts speaking, he'll he'll have 30 seconds to give his final statement on Banjo-Kazooie, of course. The realm of realistic off-road racing multiplayer power-up based games is a very limited front. I feel like this is a perfect game to fill that niche. We can get all sorts of people in to this series I've never even looked at before. Nobody's looked at it in years anyway, so we can do whatever we want with it. And it, hey, we even have these great callbacks. I mean, look at this. Kurt Coco or Grant Kerfoot is coming back. <laughs> He's not coming back. Um, what? <laughs> Time. That's it. That's the, okay. Your final statement was we can fill this niche. This game is really old. So no one gives a shit anymore, so we can change it. Grant Kirkhope is coming back. Psych, he isn't. Now, Beal, you will have 30 seconds from when you start speaking to give your final statement for your game. Banjo-Kazooie was good and Banjo-Tooie was bad. The series doesn't average out to be very high. To bring it back for Banjo-3E, we are looking at things that actually worked in the third in the 3D platforming genre and applying those to Banjo. That was a uh, short to the point, slightly inaccurate, but we will take it all the same. Now, I want to say I saved the best for last, but really anything can fucking happen when the wild card's in the room. Dr. Agro, you have 30 seconds from when you start speaking. The first Banjo-Kazooie game had within it the bones of true greatness. I believe that the sequels aired when they either built that out in the wrong direction or tried to drastically change it to chase some other sardonic market. All we really need to do is refine that core principle, improve the basic elements of the game, and just bring a pure combat platforming uh, collectathon back to a modern audience. And also, uh, we got the composer from Einhander, so, you know, that's bitchin'. What? Oh, uh, well, that's time. Uh, and, uh... Wait, way to throw the twist in, like, with two <laughs> seconds left, that's, uh... <laughs> oh, hold on, I need to fan myself. It's, it's not because you shocked me, it's because it's, uh, 100 degrees outside at, uh, 7 p.m. Now, that, uh, now that I've gotten your final statements, I need to review my notes, and then I'll get back to you. So, I've reviewed my notes on your three pitches for a brand new Banjo-Kazooie game. I'd like to provide some positive and negative points for our contestants, starting with Bob. Now, Bob, Banjo-Kazooie, of course, uh, combines aspects from MotorStorm and Diddy Kong racing, power-ups, giant space elevator sounds cool. Big fan of that. Crossover characters. Uh, even based on things that got canceled. That's uh, brave. You know what? Brave would definitely be what I'd say about that. <laughs> uh, that being said, I don't, I'm don't. i not too sure how well Playground Games can handle a more of an arcade style racing thing. I feel like Forza airs a bit more on realism. Well, they do Forza Horizon. Those ones are kind of arcadey. Hmm. Yeah, you do have a point there. I do have to wonder, though, how how well they can adapt to really get you the space map where you drive into Wumba's feet. <laughs> By the way, another negative point. Everything having to do with that part. Now, I don't... I was just... It was in the spirit of the game. I don't I don't understand. It, it, I feel like it's in the spirit of a certain strategy guide <laughs> that you may have bought... <laughs> From the year 2000. Now. <laughs> that strategy guide only depicts what was in that video game. I don't know what, what's wrong. Hollywood video is out of business for a reason. <laughs> it's time to move on to Mr. Feel and his uh, his pitch of Banjo 3 presented by Hagsoft. Um, I'm, very in, I'm very interested in your take of stripping down a lot of moves. Uh, a lot of stuff I was even thinking of for a hypothetical pitch. Stuff like Talon Trot. 
not being your fast movement option, really making it so Banjo Kazooie are equally important in a way. Uh, really, some really good stuff here. Uh, however, I feel that when I bring in someone who's going to create a video game, they should know what a microtransaction is. I think that's number one, very important. Uh, number two, I feel like uh, in general, going back and ignoring fantastic video games like Banjo Tooie might be a bit of a weakness for you. Uh, you might make this go backward a little bit too much, and we might have a franchise like Star Fox where they make the same game every time. There, there might be a risk there, potentially. But I also really like Trophy Thomas. He's a cool lad. Dr. Agro, I have the most notes from you somehow. I don't really know how that happened, but <laughs> somehow I have double the bullet points for you than I have for Bob. That's content value. A lot of value. You know, like a good collectathon, you gave me a lot of things to collect into my brain. With Banjo-Kazoo 3, I, I'd say at least more than halfway into this, I went, is, is he making Jack 3? And that piqued my interest with this corrupted version of Kazooie, but then like an enlightened, better version of Kazooie that's like awakened... Uh, uses of other characters. I like the bottles warping type of stuff. Referencing 2D is quite important. Hasn't gotten a lot of play. The moral dilemma equals dollars that you'll be using to say, hey, all these games are incomplete, but mine's complete, and it's a fucking banjo game. Sounds insane enough to work and get us 12 million shipped in the first three months. <laughs> in Europe. And I think that that's great, as well as Cat and Peck 2, or whatever the fuck that thing was, that apparently just answered every question I've had about the lore of this franchise. However, upon looking at this, um, you talked about combat and combos a lot, and, and that just it mostly just confused me. Uh, the fact that Mumbo is suddenly this evil deity also very much confuses me. And most of all, that tree doesn't speak, and that's a very big problem. And it's with all of that that I need to, I need to look inside myself and, and feel who the true winner is. Now, after much deliberation, out of all three pitches here, it's time to reveal the winner of the next Banjo-Kazooie game. Out of, uh, of all people, from the start of this episode, there was one person that I didn't want to win above all. Just one person. And, uh, unfortunately, they have won. The winner for this is... Dr. Agro. <laughs> oh, eat it, Bob. Eat it. <laughs> with, his, with his pitch of Banjo-Kazoo 3. What is your full title? I didn't get half of it. Banjo-Kazoo 3, the unbearable bird trail of mumbo-jumbo. <laughs> if I remembered that, it would have been an even easier win for you. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, I like the idea of you taking Banjo and going insane edgelord with it, I think. It just kind of reminded me of Jack 2 and 3, and those games are raw. So that automatically gave you 18 KZ points. <laughs> uh, explaining the eyeball lore is incredible. At one point, I have a bullet point that just says good controls on it. And that, that <laughs> already, <laughs> already. We say it has good controls? <laughs> 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 that was very that was very important uh the the whole overhauling of banjo directional mods and three hit combos uh, sacrificing kazooie for voodoo magic there's just a lot here that just fleshes it out but i'd say that this is a really a really close thing i was deciding i was very close between all three but everyone had a slight flaw uh bob was the most creepy thing ever, and, and it only got worse with time. Um, Feel was doing pretty well, but he said he said he said Banjo Tooie was bad, and I don't know if that makes him the best judge uh, of quality, and uh, also the microtransactions. But Doctor Agro just hitting all the right boxes, and hey, we're gonna we're gonna sell twelve million units with this game. <laughs> Is there anything you would like to say, Dr. Agro, as being the winner the, the, that isn't Bob? <laughs> I would like to dedicate this victory 
to Bob's terrible taste in 3D platformers. <laughs> <laughs> and for the rage that fueled my pitch stemming from KZ's moral cowardice during the Final Fantasy episode. <laughs> moral cowardice? <laughs> It was, uh, if anything, it was morally brave. <laughs> Dr. Agro, you are always my favorite of gigaboost.com. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out to Armchair Debs, Banjo Kazooie. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to this episode of Armchair Devs. Podcasts like this and Big Think Dimension are only possible with viewer support. If you'd like to help us in the fight for good content, please show us your support over on patreon.com slash GB podcasts, where you can also listen to the extended pitches that couldn't make it into this episode. This Gigaboots video was brought to you by our magnanimous executive producers. Vincent Povert, Nicholas Cameron, E. Lee Broyles, Brendan O'Sullivan, Star Falcon, Spaceman Spiff, Danny Richardson, Shadow in the Darkness, Dryzart, and Red Blaze 27. And also these guys. Head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today so you can try to be as cool as these people. 